episode on Harada Bar. It says super deep, limited talk. Um, Toyama's worked on a lot of ridiculous games out there. Worked with some of the craziest names, Kojima being one of them. Uh, and this is a spooky themed, uh, I guess for October. Damn, I don't know if y'all can hear that in the background. Spencer's making coffee and I left the door, but hold on y'all. They invited me on a two day overnight, God damn it, on a two day overnight tour into the forest. A large forest that stretches around Nurosawa village and the town, damn, Fujikawa Kuchiko in the Yamanashi province. It has a, had a reputation for being haunted. You stayed in the forest? No, near the forest. We booked an inn near the forest. They had been there many times. So they were used to it. Also, uh, started his own studio when he was uh, older. I didn't even know how old he was. Apparently he's like 50 or something like that. Um, but I can't remember the name of the game that he made and they have not made a game since. Was it Gravity Rush? I think it was Gravity Rush. Was it Gravity Rush? Am I tripping? I think it was Gravity Rush. I underestimated it. Oh shit, word? But I ended up seeing seven over the course of those two days. That place is like that. It's pretty common knowledge. First off, if my man is talking about ghosts, the fact that he said he's seen ghosts several, if that's what that was, that blur that blurred out word. It's pretty common knowledge, but sometimes it's like got one, which what the fu I don't know what they're talking about now. So they started eating rice balls in front of the way of front of the what? I don't know what they're talking about. You ate lunch there, too. Well, they started having lunch, so I had no choice. You know why? Why do you keep saying things we can't broadcast, right? What the fuck? This program is unlimited. Talk and variety show by Katsuhiro Harada. What part of that can we use? We might be playing the family jockey, jockey BGM the whole time until we clear it. Maybe cemetery? What did the experience do to you? Do to me? It changes your view of life and death, right? Yeah, it does. So I'm assuming they're talking about ghosts. They blurred it out. But I'm assuming that what Toyama-san saw was ghosts, right? And they talk about eating lunch in front of the ghosts. First off, that's where you fuck up. Once you do stuff like that, you kind of acknowledge the ghost. You never acknowledge. I'll walk you through it. Digital bees can't harm me. Harada-san, could you... I mean, could you get a story we can actually use? <laughs> this is my first time complaining to a guest. You said this was a good chance and brought up this story. But we can't broadcast the story at all. What is this about? You know? He's kind of crazy like that. Like I thought. This guy is not normal. See, this is the difference. Oh, snap. This is the difference between creators and regular people. I was surprised too, you know. I happened to have the experience. It was a coincidence, right? There's nothing here we can use. It was shocking. This is Harada thinking. <laughs> That's a pretty unusual experience. Maybe we should put illustrations here. This is difficult. Let's put a cute drawing or something. We haven't had a guest like this where we can't use their stories. I wonder what he was saying that they can't use. This should have been a closed event. But you know, how should I put this? But I can understand how you feel. I feel like I can tell just by looking at you. You know? Seems like you accept those things naturally. You shouldn't. Side note, man. You can't be out here just accepting ghosts 
I'm just saying, because that, that's how you get possessed. And I don't think you guys want to get possessed. This is tough. It is tough. Bro, I, my man is <laughs> talking about guardian spirits and Enma. Oh, shit. But I feel like I can't accept the existence of ghosts. That'd be a problem for me. Hold on, bro. You can't. No, you can't be seeing ghosts and then not accept the existence of it, man. I don't think they're a problem at all. Really? If they could influence us, a lot more terrible things should be going on. When I blank. What the fuck? When I blank. <laughs> when I blank or whatever and they were behind me. I mean. When I what? <laughs> when I shit? Like what? When I wash my hands? Like what does he say? I couldn't handle it so I can't accept their existence. That's true. If you have a guardian angel watching you, it'd be a problem if they're always watching what you see and do. Ah, got it. <laughs> I can understand that. It's not about being judged if I'm a good person. <laughs> Because I don't think I've done anything bad. But if my ancestors are watching me all the time, but I'd be in trouble. <laughs> so in the Japanese afterlife process, you cross the Sanzu River and go see Enma. Oh shit, we're going on a trip? And there's this mirror, I forget the name though. You'll see everything you've done in the mirror. <laughs> That's a huge invasion of privacy. <laughs> I don't mind if it's just me and Emma looking at what I did. <laughs> but in lots of books and old scrolls. But in, there are tons of other people around the mirror. <laughs> they know what people would hate happening after death. But isn't that awful? It's not just you and Emma. Everyone is there. <laughs> there are tons of inspectors. It's like a... <laughs> it's like when they have people in on the operations and they're sitting in the room up top and you're like hey guys look at this I was redacted off in my bed <laughs> and my guardian redacted caught me <laughs> what I mean is even if it's not about crimes what do you say you still don't want that yeah since there are way too many parts we can't air. So we still have time for a regular talk theme. Things in common. Damn, he's got little sections. He both make games, but in different genres. But the genres are totally different. Things in common between us about games. I don't think there is, yeah. But maybe there's something in common between you two that you guys naturally have. As people who are in totally different genres, what do you think of each other? And anything you have in common. There's a clear one for me, which is... When I was still new, I was asked to make a 3D game, which I had no idea about. But it was in order. It was because I was young. But none of us newer members had those skills. Those skills either. All we could do is look to fighting games as a reference. At the time, fighting games were the benchmark for their entire industry. Moving human bodies like that was only being done by fighting games. Damn, that's kind of odd to think about because was there a time where there were only 3D fighting games out there that were like on the 3D scope of like actual three dimensions? And just moving, being able to move characters in a certain way. I mean, if from what they're talking about. Controlling a human body precisely. So PlayStation, well, 
when I was working on the characters for International Track and Field, I refer to the characters in Tekken a lot. Really? At the time, I didn't have a lot of knowledge. I was impressed by the shading. It wasn't actually tough. What was I It wasn't actually, though, was it? It wasn't actually, though, was it? Maybe Garold. What'd he say? God damn it. I was impressed by the shading. Maybe Garold shading? No, in Tekken 2. We started with the square like. God damn, they're going too fast. Hold on. Square like shading, I think. In Tekken 2. How should I put this? Garold shading was used on their thighs. Oh, yeah, we used it for Michelle's thighs. <laughs> <laughs> but before that they were drawn on like shading yeah that was just like the texture it's interesting the world's first commercial game to be textured was Ridge Racer Tekken was the first 3D polygon game wait what to be textured right the first time I saw Yoshimitsu's armor, I didn't know about the shading, but it looked metal, right? Yeah. It's just a gradient of white and blue. I noticed that later on. I was like, I see and copied it. Yeah, I'm thinking about stuff like Battle Arena, Toshinden, and, and stuff like that uh, is, is all I'm thinking about right now. Uh, damn, and Ridge Racer, that makes a lot of sense, man. Ridge Racer being, like, the first, like, 3D game, I guess, or, you know, them using polygons, especially that that, that transfers over to, like, Tekken as well. Bro, uh, Ridge Racer is actually one of the GOATs, bro. Just the soundtrack alone. I still need to get a physical version of the Ridge Racer Type 5 soundtrack. Ridge Racer Type 4, excuse me. I was like, I see and copied it for international track and field. I think it's something you noticed from the beginning. I didn't notice at first. Oh, wow. At first, I was only a beginner. Finally, some talk we can use. Maybe it was right after entering the company. When I started, it was the golden age of Tekken and Virtua Fighter. Virtua Fighter used what's called... What do you say? Raw polygons. Yeah, Virtua Fighter was like... They use shading and textures and stuff. I thought it was the same for Tekken, but actually it was just drawn on. <laughs> that was a texture technique. But it was really surprising that you can draw and show them like that. You said they announced a Ridge Racer arcade one up. It's crazy because I did that for them. Doodly -doo. But it was really surprising. Hold on, what are you saying? It was really it's surprising that you can draw and show them like that. That was a common thing at Namco. In Tekken turn and Tekken Tag Tournament for the PlayStation 2, the floor looked like it had these waves. People said that's some great bump mapping. I remember this, but it was just the texture. Damn, that's actually like so if you looked at I remember when they showed Tekken Tag Tournament for PlayStation 2 in like the magazine. Like the grounds look crazy textured. That is a common story. We didn't do high level mapping like that. Anyway, it was like How should I put this? I was assigned to the team for international track and field. And at first, it was really disappointing. At first, we were going to work on PlayStation. The assignment list was on the wall and everything. What do you say? And everyone was checking. You check your assignment like you would for posted exam results. Yeah, it was posted on the wall. Wow, I've never seen something like that at Namco. Bump mapping was like ray tracing back in the day. Yo, damn, that's bars. That's absolutely bars. <laughs> I was just zoned out on the cab. I've been wa uh, wanting that my whole life. Hey, damn. I ain't know it was like that for you, soft serve. Well, now you get to get that bad boy. 
I looked for my assignment, or my assignment, and it said 3D track and field. Sounds kind of cool. Yeah. I thought it'd be a battle game like this. <laughs> but they told me that it's an Olympics game, and I was really disappointed. You know, I remember looking. Oh, my God. So I remember. I think it was like Game Informer or some shit. I remember when I saw International Track and Field. If this is the same game that's on PlayStation 2, I remember being like, yo, Ma, do you see this? This is the next generation of graphics. It looked so real. It looked like shit. Like, like if you go, like, those images do not hold up. Like, at all. But I remember that. That That's hilarious. If this is the same game. If this is the one on PS2, it's 100% the same game. Because I remember the demo for that shit. Wait, what did he say? They told me it was an Olympics game, and I was really disappointed. Really? I was like, seriously? Like, I don't match at all. What did he say? I don't match with sports game at all. I, I thought, really? Track and field? That was one of Konami's. Yeah, I remember it, because it was a Konami game. It's going mad fast. One of Konami's flagship IPs. Yeah, so I changed my mind and decided to go work on it, and it turned out really good. We had to animate human figures. And got us to use motion capture for the first time at Konami. It ended up like this, and we were going to use motion capture data to animate people. But unlike fighting games, there was no exchange of complex collision detection. You know, I always wondered that. Like, why it looks so good. You're like, man, this shit looks crazy. And, like, comparatively, it's because there's no, like, you don't have to worry about collision detection. You don't have to worry about those polygons or those models actually interacting. So you can focus just mostly on the cinematic. We're going to the Olympics or you're watching it on TV. That's kind of cool, actually. All we had to do was use motion capture data. And make a mini game that can be played, right? I see. There were six people, including me, on the team. And we were all newbies except for the director. It was really, e it was a really easy mission. So we were able to complete the game. And I also learned how to animate characters. But while we were making it, fighting games started connecting joints. Envelop, huh? Yeah, I was really impressed. So I used that for Silent Hill. Oh, shit. You connect at their neck and shoulders. I refer to fighting games a lot. Oh, that's dope. The technology that Namco had at the time was really... It was really impressive. When I was a child, I thought... There was this golden age... So I wanted to work at a company like Namco or Bandai that makes Gunplug. Oh, yeah. Is that so? I wanted to go to SEA. Wait, wait. Or did he say Sega or SEA? He said I wanted to go to Sega. Yeah, I w yeah, Sega too. I wanted to join Sega, but I accidentally went to the programmer's orientation. <laughs> because of the mistake, my schedule was moved back. And I got accepted by Namco first, so I joined Namco. I failed Sega, so I entered Konami. You failed Sega? Yeah, I decided to enter Namco, so I withdrew halfway through. If we had entered Sega, both of our lives would be totally different. But at Konami, I was in department that worked on Sega stuff. Ah. So I was like, I'll do my best for Sega. But soon I ended up being in a position that might destroy Sega. Oh, what? Like Animals of the Three Kingdoms. Wait, what? Like Animals of the Three Kingdoms. I know originally I like Sega, but my company asked me when you take when can you take down Sega? Oh, oh damn. I said maybe in 10 years. Yeah, I remember this. I was like, "Yeah, I'm on the side of Sega. I get you." Like, hold up. Man, this is really paying attention. So you both apply, apply to Sega. That's one thing you have in common. 
that's true playing to sega is what we have in common too neither of us actually joined sega too maybe the timing wasn't far off either yeah almost the same time we both animated human figures around the same time a difference between he and i when we joined a company though is that he saw a list and found out his assignment there which was very different from me i was kind of spoiled the president and programmers asked me what i wanted to do damn What do you want to do? I see. We'll prepare that position for you. Damn. The president and all senior programmers were like. I see. That's what you. Oh, my God. I see. That's what you want to do. We'll prepare it for you in a few days. Okay. I'll be waiting. Damn. Wow. I got a great tool. <laughs> Yay. I want to do this or that, but this doesn't have the function. Okay, wait until tomorrow. Sure. That was how I made games at the time. Damn, he was living a good life. That's like a dream. That's the best. Yeah. When I was in school, I was raised strict like military. My parents were strict and forbid playing video games too. So I thought game industry is so cool. Now that I think about it, oh, damn it. Now that I think about it, only Namco was like that. Virtua Fighter was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, the Sega AM2 team was the coolest. When I saw Tekken for the first time, I thought, I like Namco, but now they made like a Virtua Fighter ripoff. <laughs> like a westernized, yeah. At the same time, Virtua Fighter was our... Yeah, it was like that. I saw it at an arcade and noticed it used the System 11, same as the PlayStation. I played it. And I was like, huh? This is kind of fun. <laughs> Hold up. This is kind of fun. When I hit a death fist with Paul, and you know, 10 hit combos. Unblockable moves and 10 hit combos. That's true. The intro of 10 hit move, uh, combos, it got me and I was like, this is really fun. At the time, Namco actually failed at 2D fighting games. We didn't really think about working on making a fighting game. All we had was technology. Toyama-san, we're nearing the end of the recording. And this is a good opportunity so are there any questions you want to drop on Harada-san? I got to remember this for when my interview comes up. Toyama-san wanted to, thing Toyama-san wanted to ask Harada. Where does your mysterious duality come from? Hold on. Do I have a mysterious duality? Yeah. <laughs> Toyama-san is really creepy. The way he said that. Am I two-faced? I think everybody thinks so. Really? Like what? I don't think I understand myself. I mean, you're strangely... Harada-san is like meticulous. But also... Kind of open like... Like rough. As a friend. Damn, it sound like you're breaking up with him. It's surprising that you're so meticulous. When we go out drinking, you're always funny, and that's the image we have. But sometimes, surprisingly, you're really meticulous. I was wondering where that came from. Attentive. Like maniac. I think it's true that you are attentive. <laughs> like sensitive, right? Yeah. Your checks are very attentive. As for the two sideness, I think. By the way, there was a time my personality completely changed. 
Maybe that's what affected me from the time I was a little kid until I was a sophomore in high school. All I did was draw and take lessons. I was like that. I like these reminiscings. Damn it. What did he say? All I did was draw and take lessons. I was like that. My man reminiscing hard. You weren't an outdoor person. I hated going outside, but my parents forced me to do sports. Yo, that's facts, man. I ain't hate going outside, but I definitely was forced. When I entered college, I entered doing sport. I started doing sports, says Arata. And somehow I got recommended as captain. Damn. He looks like a cool Captain Letterman j jacket wearing type. I think I learned weird stuff. Oh, shit. If you act daring and rough, it makes others go easy on you. I noticed that. So sometimes I'm meticulous about sensitive things. But I think I learned if I pretend to be rough, I'll be accepted by people. Damn, my man's getting deep right now. Actually, I have a similar experience. Really? I used to be an annoying, bothersome kid. I used to, I can see that somehow. <laughs> I can see that. Did you say everybody can tell? I can see that somehow. I can see that. <laughs> None of you are surprised. Everyone can tell. I didn't really understand how to live in society. In a society. We live in a society. But I started working in a video game rental store. I entered college and wanted to do a job that was related to my hobby. Okay. But most of my coworkers were like band people. So at first, I couldn't get along with them. I felt like I had nothing in common. They were kind of like punks, what? As you said just now, if I was being rough, like copy them and be less proper. I mean, but when I acted like that, it's not only just so you can't survive in the moment, but also a personality like this makes people relieved and easy to get along with. Exactly same here. And a sense of part of me is not my original childhood self. Bro, they are getting mad deep right now. So he's saying he was doing this, you know, just to, you know, fit in. And, and Harada is saying the same. Like, he was just like, yo, bro, you got to you gotta take that leadership role. You got to be a little rough, you know? What's up with it, Fred Burkhoff? This is, that they are getting deep right now. And now Harada says, in a sense, uh, a part of me is not my original childhood self. I think all of us can say that. All of us can say that. But to be aware of it, to be consciousness of it, that's another thing. Consciousness. I just became, what do you say? I just became able to show it. To put it simply, dirty jokes. At first they kept responding with dirty jokes. <laughs> At first I hated it. I know. Like, why are you being so vulgar? But if you use it, it's funny. I know it's fun. Sometimes I have something I want to say that I feel sensitive about. But I put it out rough on purpose. Bruh, my man is giving y'all some life lessons right now. It's, I think, because of the language. It's different to talk Japanese properly about stuff like that yeah you can tell 
I, I, like you can tell that wh whoever, but the fact that like I can even keep up to it, whoever's translating this, they're doing a good job. It even causes misunderstanding of, of myself. It makes people relaxed. What do you say? It makes people relaxed. It makes conversation smooth. Right. Maybe this is the best thing we have in common. We found it. So like just they basically talk about just, you know. I guess conducting more about um, even if he Harada makes the example, even if he feels, you know, sensitive about something or he cares deeply for something, the way that he betrays it to the people around him is in a very rough demeanor. It's in a very loose way. Um, and he says that makes it easier. And Toyama agrees that it just makes it easier for him to get along with people. Can we get a Pompadour Harada emote? Oh, damn. Is that a pic? There's a picture of that? That's what I made. That's what made me like this. People like me might notice I'm double faced. But I don't think regular people see that far. Dog, that's facts, bro. People don't understand that sometimes when you're in different situations, you, you're not always going to have the, the context of how people are or how they act is going to be different. And I ain't going to say how they act because it's like some kind of front. But you see different sides of people, man. That's really crazy to think, man. Because a lot of people think that they see you in one instance, that you're that way all the time. I know. Trust me. I fucking know. So it's, it's really cool. Uh to see that that's not something that is just limited to the people on this side of anything like the industry you know and it's not even like an industry thing it's more just like about socializing and being human in some aspects man you got to go outside your comfort zone sometimes and sometimes going outside your comfort zone is um saying something differently than you would typically say it and not in like a bad way or anything uh, like that but like he said man using jokes being looser you know what i'm saying not being as proper just the fact that both of them are aware of it uh says a lot too though but i don't think regular people see that far now rather than directing i'm facing my staff as the manager of the company how should i put this it's easier to live when you're not perfect that's so true oh oh yo chat Take time with yourself, though. If you're the top of the group isn't strict, if the top of the group isn't strict, it makes people feel like they have to be the strict ones. You're right. The bosses I get along with best are not perfect people. But people are a bit off. This is a nice talk after all. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like they're being off on purpose. Being a little off is important. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make people feel nervous. Especially, I want young people to think that they're better than me. I don't want young people to think they're better than me. I can understand that. I think that's fine. I'm fine with being the dirty joke man. <laughs> I know. Which Kasuge do you love most? Kasuge, Japanese slang word for janky, a really crappy game, short for a kuso game. Hold on, hold on, which means shit game. Last but not least, let's hear about which Kosuge you love most is. Let's ask, do you have one? I've prepared my answer, but it's a weak answer. What is it? So, so which Kosuge do you love most? Nietzsche. Yakyukyo. Sharp X1. The Sharp X1 game. That was on a cassette tape, right? Yeah, I remember it. A cassette tape? I know you don't really get get it, so I'll explain the reason. I remember the logo, says Harada. I'll tell you my memory of the game. Yakyu-kyo? Yakyu-kyo? The name translates to Baseball Madness. A baseball game released in Japan by Hudson for the PC in 1984. That's the year I was born. It was before family, what is it? It was before family stadium. That you could play versus. 
So it was the origin of Power Pros in those games. The most groundbreaking part as the originator is that you could name each player their ability too. You could decide batting average and defense level for each player. What? You can just decide it? And you could register it. At the time, I begged my parents and got a Sharp X1. So I had a Sharp X1 and my friend would come to my house, but sometimes these punks, I didn't consider friends. Oh, shit. Made their way over somehow. There were two main reasons they came over. One, my sister was cute. <laughs> wow, easy to tell. They wanted to see her. I see. Second reason was my parents ran a rice shop. So they'd... They beg? I don't know what the fuck that means. That's terrible. They were just blank then. Third reason was the game. You got all the reasons for punks to come. This game they really liked was Yaku 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 What do you say? My bad. I started reading in my head. When I was a junior in high, I was in junior high. I wasn't interested in baseball at all. But you could name each player in the game. So I put the names of my girl classmates and assigned a batting order. And they loved it. <laughs> I see. It became a super popular thing to do. So dumb. <laughs> It makes you excited to make a team with girls from your class, you know? Because you're in puberty. It was fun. Set parameters and stuff. Defensive and offensive power. Somehow I can understand. Harada-san, which Kusuge do you love most? Meech? Relics? I've never heard of that. I know that game. Not NES. Maybe there was an NES version. There was but one. Maybe something like NEC PC 88. Wait, is it 88 or 98? Maybe old. We saw a lot at a shop. I'm not judging the contents of the game. I'm not talking about it if the content is good or bad. Their concept at the time was surprising. Relics, an action-adventure game released by Boltec in 1984 for PC. You couldn't release that these days, really. Because the genre and everything on the package was their concept. People couldn't tell what kind of game it was <laughs> unless they could read MyCon Basic. And there was no internet at the time, so the country people who had no idea, they just started selling a game. They couldn't tell what it was. How much was it? Around 8,000 yen? That's 80 bucks. I think it was around 8,000 yen. I thought an X1 version, but I couldn't. Oh, snaps. But I couldn't play halfway through because of a bug. I couldn't even play it. Even when the game started, yeah, you don't really know. <laughs> that was the concept of a game and it was on purpose. It was not that they were being lazy, it was on purpose. <laughs> Only what PC you could play on was written on the package. I remember, what? I don't, it was written on the package. I don't know if they still do it, but it was like, but it was like a mystery train. Oh, wow. Where you don't know the destination. Or like a trip you don't know the destination. That was the image of the game. The sales point was that you 
don't know what kind of game it is. It was surprising even as a kid. I felt like that was incredible. So it's one of the Kasuga, Kasugis that I love. Is that what he said? I love, I love most. They could do that because it was that era. If you tried to do that now, you'd get tons of complaints. Cus customer support will have a tough time. That's true. <laughs> 